with us on the show today is um, Judge Hepsiver, cartoonist and school advocate. He's here to talk about kids' development. And um, he's also an illustrator and music artist editor. Hello, George. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. My Thank pleasure. you very much for joining us. Thank you. So um, what, you're a cartoonist, and I'm very interested in that. That's a, a budding industry. It's not something I would say that is totally thriving in Nigeria. What piqued your interest in cartoon industry? Well, I, I would say um, it's actually a natural, it's an innate um, gift. You know, it started from childhood. Um, like I said, natural. And we, we didn't really start out with influence from a particular industry. Like, you, you just used the word, the cartoon industry. Mm. Then, as a child, the industry that we were exposed to was actually from the Western world. All the cartoon series then on TV was actually from the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. So, like, the Voltron Force, Super Ted, you know, Mickey Mouse, and the likes, quite a number. So, it, it was probably our best past, pastime then you know, to go to watch this um, exciting series on TV. And um, we had this crave to represent our own graphic imaginations too, you know. Um, have sketches, scribble stuff on paper, try to mold with some. Um, you know, we engaged a lot of stuff, creative stuff, but it wasn't we... Then, back then, it wasn't with an idea of, okay, we're going to impact a particular industry at the time, or we're going to make a profit from it. It was just a passion, it was just something lovable to do. You know, so, but over time, you know, it blossomed with, you know, with the realization that we could do this. We started seeing African cartoon, you know, and, um, it just dawned on me that, yeah, I, I could, I would love to do this. I, I have the talent, I have the ability. Why not channel this into, you know, a part where it becomes gainful, you know, beneficial, and also um, creates a culture where we can actually have um, professionals, creative professionals, cartoonists, graphic persons doing such things, you know, to impact the society and also the economy at large. So that's basically how it started. Okay, so now we already know that um, about two years ago, um, the first ever animation festival held in Nigeria. Yes, exactly. And a lot of um, animators came in, showed their work. Nigerians who came in to the exhibition, the festival, you know, they were like shocked that they had people who could do so well, exactly. you know, animation-wise in Nigeria. Now, don't you think it's a matter of you, the cartoonists, illustrators, and animators, actually putting your work, your work out there than just people accepting you? Because there were people who saw great art yeah. and they bought a lot of stuff for their children. Yeah. But they were like, they didn't know that these things existed. So don't you think it's a matter of the animators actually putting their work out there for it to be seen? Yes, I, I don't think it's just the, the, old, the whole challenge rests on the shoulders of the animators alone because, like I said earlier, it's not a culture. You know, we are trying to create a culture that is um, acceptable. First, we have a few, a handful of animators, or let me say the animation community has not actually um, come together to work as a formidable unit, as a productive unit. We're still basically freelancers that's the truth you know we have very few people like um comic con you know doing the the community thing trying to bring the industry together i think they're, they're actually in the forefront of this the pioneers of trying to make sure the industry through its creative resources mm. impacts the society but it, when i started out you know into the animation industry i it was a freelance thing, it was a solo thing and an in-house thing. Who would just come, work for me, do this stuff for me, and uh, we'll do it for this agency, we'll get mm -hmm. paid. Um, it's about what you do, what you give, and what you get in return. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about, let's create like the Nollywood effect thing, you know, like home videos, cartoon mm -hmm. movies. So because cartoon is actually, um, doing animation and cartoon is actually more difficult than the real life presentations. 
it's there's a whole lot of work that goes into it so you find people who do not have the time maybe because of our society the influence in the society like they, they don't have the time to oh i really want to take time give sacrifice um six months two months of my valuable time to work on something that um i don't really know how the society will accept it you understand so a few visionary cartoonists and animators i begin to appreciate you know the the impact of cartoon 3d animation in the society because uh, the kids in this part of the world actually accepts it mm -hmm. but um the 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 older generation you understand don't actually see the direct and the positive impact of this cartoon um, system this cartoon resources and the younger generation so it's quite difficult to sell materials of this kind if the older generation are not are not convinced that they're actually useful okay many so, old people in the quote-unquote older generation that binge watch cartoons and you know comics they still love stuff like that but away from that would you how much would you say that cartoons impact children and given from from your own perspective were you really influenced as much by cartoon as a, as a matter of fact is my most exciting nostalgic moment till date you understand to date like the impact of cartoon in my childhood still reverberates understand to this to to, pre to this present time and um, i wonder how many parents you know actually recall the this impact how because cartoon just don't excite you it inspires you it makes you think outside the box it puts something there that is not that is extraordinary you might not notice it in your subconscious but you you think differently you 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 be able to manage situations puzzles that you press you probably didn't acquire those skills from conventional learnings so but this creative art this creative um resources has a way of impacting us intellectually and um in every way so what i would say is what parents need to do is to look at how their kids respond to cutting influence like for instance you put merchandise out there you a kid that has um, that sees um, a regular bag compared to the ben 10 bag mm -hmm. you understand will definitely say hey mom i need ben 10. you may not know ben 10 but this child knows ben 10 Spon spongebob um ninja turtles and the likes and they will go for these materials the toys you know the the t-shirts you know this exercise books they enjoy this so what this present generation especially the african um, parents and guardians need to appreciate is the fact that besides just i think they view it as a fantasy mm. that is beyond us is beyond a fantasy you understand it can actually impact kids positively it can actually make kids um and smart mm. exceptionally smart like they think out of the box they are not regular kids you understand you like i was i was let me use myself for example to buttress this point in class i paid less attention but i was brilliant i drew away on my exercise books you know i did a lot of scribblings and comics and but when it comes to academic work it was easy for me because the challenge of creative art it's it stretches me beyond the regular academic you know exercise i'm exposed to in school every day so teachers find it very unusual to punish the child that is not paying attention you know he's not paying attention but his cause well his grades he's doing good you understand he's doing well in his grades and they don't have any complaint about that but what they want is is a distraction the only complaint is is a distraction to other kids okay so yeah. don't you also still um on you the animators yeah. don't you think sometimes it's about the content that you produce now for example i remember growing yeah. up and watching um the cartoon series early in the morning sarah okay where they discussed about um female, female genital, genital mutilation, mutilation. Yeah. 
Okay. And other things that affected girls. Now, I learned about female genital mutilation, truthfully, from watching the Sarah series. Sarah series. And then there was Superbook. Hmm. And then, you know, I would watch that too. And I also watched Pocahontas. And then I later discovered that John Smith was actually a real life character. Wow. I, you know, I had to hmm. read about those other people that I had seen in books. I, I read about Galileo Galilee from a small animation book pad my uncle brought from the US. Then, and then I read something about him during Neko in school. Now I'm saying, don't you think it's about the content? Because most times animation content is just about people fighting, shooting, stop flying. Sometimes parents are like, if it's an educative, somewhat educated to some extent, maybe in another area, their child might be interested and they would want to also get such materials for their child. Don't you think it's about the area of specialization of you, the cartoonist or illustrator? I totally agree with you there. I think that's, the res that's where the, the cartoonists, okay. animators need to take holistic responsibility to look at it. And um, because true, um, most of the content we have in this part of the world, we're trying to copy, you know, the Western content, mm. you understand? And their culture that has to do with Spider-Man rescuing the day and he has to fight, you know, villains. He has to engage hood, hoodlums and thieves and all that. Criminals, sometimes alien um, um, agents like that. So we really need to come down to basics. So have we started doing a lot of more Nigerian cartoons? I remember stumbling on one that was telling the story of Shongu and the rest of them. Yes. How well received is Nigerian cartoons? Are we seeing more of that? Are we expected to see more of that? Yes, we are evolving. I know you did one as well. Yes, Super we're J. evolving. So talk, tell us about Super J. I would say, generally speaking, the cartoon industry in Nigeria is going to take, um, is going to have a massive impact soon because we, we begin to realize that we, there are a lot of people creating local contents now. Like, I worked on a content called um, Anipulapo. It's, it's not really about the part of the Anipulapo yeah, no. we're aware of, but it's the kind of... Um, the spirit of Anipulapo taking hold and fighting corruption, you know, mm. fighting human rights abuse, but it comes into a particular person, you understand, and transform this person into an activist that has extraordinary ability and courage. I'd like so to see that. That was, that was really inspiring. You know, I walked in and I told the guy, this is great, this is great stories, we have to try to character together, and it was exciting. Now we have other cartoon um, representations and stories that are really, you know, African, you know, okay. friendly, and they're really going to make a lot of impact. Like, I, I in particular, I have, I have a series called um, Dr. G, The Amazing Dr. G, which is actually my cartoon alter ego, myself, you know, and it's, it, you know, it's, for me, it's a dream come true. You, you live in this fantasy world, it drives you, this passion that drives you, you know, crazy all the time. And you transform that excitement creatively into a source of inspiration for children, children of this present generation, you know. So what Dr. G does, to break it down a bit, is I, because of my numerous health challenges, I, my alter ego persona represents a superhero doctor with the ability to shrink into atomic size go into the system of a sick child and fight the pathogenic foes. Wow. So the germs and the parasites the are actually personified, you understand, mm. and he engages them. So there's a bit of combat, you know, entertainment and everything, but the objective is get these villains out of this child and the child has, is restored to the we full health. We desperately need yeah. Dr. G, not just to <laughs> heal young children, to heal the adults as well as the whole country, we need to see, <laughs> you know, Dr. G infiltrating our systems and wow. ensuring that we are kicking I'll out a lot of people. Please ensure that happens. But thank you so much, Ms. for joining thank you us. Very much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.